going to be waving the baby around. Okay. <laughs> I almost... Waving the baby around. Right <laughs> We're live. We're live, kids. And look who's here. Julia is back from... Hi, friends. Hey. Thank you. And I, Happy to I be know... here. I know a lot of you are going to be happy to see Julia, even though even though Phil and Tanner are great, but you know, Julia, you're special. Uh, thanks. Okay, I'm. I'll be. I'll be behind the scenes. Great to see y'all. Okay. And we'll wait a couple of minutes so we get uh, get some couple people. Thousand, couple thousand people. Couple watching. thousand. Yeah, a couple thousand. Watching. Yeah. yeah. We got so Kevin what's, from uh, Scotland. What, what's the uh, sky like up there today, Tom? Cloudy. Sm smoky still, or? Well, it's tough to tell because it's cloudy. Yeah. But it was smoky yeah. the other day when when the sun was out. Uh, we we have we have Danny from the Netherlands and Bill from Indiana, and Ed and Mac from Tennessee from Australia. Wow, we've got a, another international audience. Today. Wow, That's so cool. So cool. Really exciting. Oh, Let's Rob from it. Vegas, baby. <laughs> In Ontario, Virginia, War Dog 7621 from Smoky Philly. Oh, that's our they're, they're coming in. They're coming in. But there's no Flagler fans here, right? I don't think there's any. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh well, I, yeah. Oh well, uh, happens. Yeah. All right. Well, so I we, think what are we tying, Tom? This is your tying? choice. Yeah. What are we tying? Today we are tying the Quigley Cripple, which um, I personally think is uh, one of the most innovative dry flies. Um, I, I've ever seen. Uh, when I first saw this fly, I thought it looked dumb with the wing going out over the eye. And it just didn't make sense to me until I put it in the water and looked at how it hangs and how it looks just like an emerging mayfly. Um, and it, it, it's just a brilliant fly. It was uh, developed by uh, Bob Quigley, the late Bob Quigley from California, who's a, a really great fly tire, came up with a whole bunch of cool patterns. And I, I like this fly better than the Last Chance Cripple, which, which you and I have tied before. It's a Rene Harrop pattern. It's really based on, on this fly. I like this fly better because um, it doesn't have a biot body, which I hate but also because um, I find that the deer hair wing um, stands up better and is uh, more visible than the CDC wing. Um, you know, we fish sulfurs a lot in the evening and I find that, I, that I, I can't see that CDC wing as well. And it tends to, you know, unless you keep dressing it with powder, uh, the CDC wing tends to just get limp and, and not fluff up properly. I don't know about you. Yeah, no, it's the same for me. I, uh, I, I have just this love-hate relationship with CDC. I, yeah, I, I like the way it, on some flies and how it's tied in. I, I absolutely love it on others. Uh, like you said, I, I'm constantly fighting to keep it, keep it dry or you know ha yeah. have it show up a little bit. And uh, yeah, yeah, and th this one solves it. Did do you know what year he invented originated this fly? Quickly. No, I think I, it was in the nineties. I, uh, I'm not in, sure. In, um, in doing just a little research, um, before we tied this, just looking at mm -hmm. other, other way, other people tied it. Um, mm -hmm. Hans Weilenman from the Netherlands, one of my, one of my heroes, one of my tying heroes, uh, he tied it. And in his video, his tying video, he, he said that, uh, Mr. Quigley originated in 1974. Oh my which, God! Wow. Yeah, which if, if that's I, I'm pretty sure that's what uh, Han said, and if that's the case, I mean that, that tr truly inspirational fly. It, it, as far as I remember, in 1970, well, I was in middle school, I think. You you'd already graduated from college, right, Tom? Or 
No, I graduated in 76, <laughs> but I was in college, so not in middle school. <laughs> oh, oh, gosh. That's but that was, I mean, uh, that was shortly <laughs> after No Hackles and Comparadons came out. So that. Right. I'm, I'm like, I, I don't even think people had come up with the term a merger. I, you know, I'm, I'm joking. No, Swisher I mean, and Richards did. Yeah, Swisher yeah, and but, Richards But very about. few people talked about a merger yeah. and, and, yeah. and, yeah. and, and things like that and cripples and, you know, anything that wasn't, you know, a, a Catskill Dry or a Nymph or, you know, a parachute. Um, from what I recall anyway. Um, so, so yeah, very inspired pattern and the, yeah. you know, the number of uh, flies kind of derivative, like, like you said, like the last chance um, mm -hmm. obviously uh, have its origins in the, in the uh, Quigley cripple. Yeah. Um, so and for those of you time, who, for those of you who, you know, think this is just an imitation of a cripple, it's yeah, it, it's an imitation of a cripple, but it's a great emerging mayfly too. I mean, there's, I don't think there's any difference between a cripple and an emerger. They're they're both look the same on the water. Right? Well, yeah. Like, okay, if we could talk about that for a second, um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, people, <laughs> I, I think, and I, I'm going to catch some flack for this when I know it, but um, what one of the, you know, like sayings um, in in fly fishing is, if if somebody can't figure out that you know they're they're, they're the the trout are feeding on the surface, but people can't see what they're really eating instantly they go they're on emergers okay it, uh -huh. it, it's like the the pat phrase i don't care whether it's blueing olives or or yeah. march browns yeah. it, they're on they're on uh, emergers but yeah. the fact of the matter is in, in um you know shooting a lot of video this past year of, of trout coming up um and uh yeah mer emergers definitely but a lot of times it it, it is cripples or it, it's somewhere in between an emerger and a cripple something that's that's kind of just struggling in the water surface and and whether you wanted to call it say that they're stuck in their shock or whether they're simply s struggling um it, the the rise form a lot of times looks exactly the same and you know the trout comes up and just barely gets its um snout over the the top of the water or or kind of just pushes water and and takes it that way and and so i i kind of in my mind anyway i'm, I'm sort of grouping spinners cripples and emergers all together um, mm -hmm. and, and going you know a fly like the quigley cripple represents all of the above and, yeah it could it yeah could very and, well yeah. and kind of in my mind fish it that way so have at, have at it <laughs> he, he, guys that are you know all about emergers um no i fished it during a spinner fall the other night on the bat and kill yeah but i but i never saw a rising fish i put oh, really? it on <laughs> <laughs> i never saw a rising fish typical oh, yeah <laughs> yeah we we had such a good sulfur hatch down here that it was it was um and it lasted for about two weeks it's pretty much done now here in new jersey um and it was a great time for testing out you know, uh, cat skill style versus parachutes versus, yeah. um, you know, spinners, egg layers, um, cripples, emergers, and, and uh, you know, because there were numbers of fish that were rising and, and taking bugs. So, but Tim, our trout yeah. have fins up here. They, oh, all of, oh, all of their, oh, all of oh, that all hurts. Of their, wow, all of their fins. <laughs> <laughs> so you saw my instagram feed is what you're telling me i was watching those videos and i was Come gonna on. make a snarky comment oh that look <sighs> that one has all his fins but i didn't <laughs> oh that hurts <laughs> okay shall we start tying and stop <laughs> oh yeah let's get away from that conversation wow i uh, hope this is easier than that black gnat dry that you picked Jeez. yeah i i think it is and I believe it's a much better fly to begin with. It's not, not going to be a bloodbath today, no. hopefully. <laughs> that was that was horrible. Yeah. No, <laughs> this one, it, and I shouldn't jinx myself here, Tom. But but it it's it it's it looks at first like it has a lot of components in it, but yeah. it really doesn't. For one, um, yeah. and and the the fact of the matter is, there is nothing really difficult about tying it. There isn't one little no. tricky tricky part no, that's not just really. a pain you know you're not splitting yeah. wings um trying to get things the exact right length or anything like yeah. that so, yeah um, yeah yeah it's a neat pattern 
it takes a little practice, but um, yeah, it, it's not it's not beyond the reach of of most tires. Yeah, and like the, there the, are like some the black pitfalls. Bass. There's some pet pitfalls in it, and yeah. let's, let's I'm, all I'm hope hoping you fall into. Everyone. I'm hoping you fall into a couple of them, Flagler, <laughs> and I will be rooting for you to fall into those pits. <laughs> oh man! Yeah. All right, who's going right. first? I'll go first. Okay, so we don't have to we don't have to uh, argue over it. <laughs> Look at that work of art! Wow. Okay, so I am tying this on a tactical dry fly hook, unlike Mr. Flagler, who didn't follow the instructions. Well, uh, uh, specific, I have a good reason not to. Why? Um, I'll show you in a minute. Okay. Anyways, I'm using a tactical dry fly because I like it, it has kind of a continuous bend on it. And I like to tie the shuck hanging down, and um, it's a little bit easier on this hook. Plus, this hook is barbless, um, and it holds really well. So that, that's why I'm tying it on an Orvis uh, tactical dry fly hook. And I'm using 8 uh, yellow thread. And I'm going to start right about in the middle. Cut my thread. And then I'm going to wind back a little bit down the bend. Not too much, but a little bit just so that that shuck gets kind of angled down into the water. And I'm going to leave my thread there. And then I am going to get my body and tail. And uh, there are a number of things you can tie the body and tail with in this fly. Uh, marabou, uh, you can tie it with pheasant tail, which looks really nice. I've seen these flies tied with pheasant tail. Uh, I like ostrich on this, uh, but you have to, you have to kind of sort through ostrich hurls to find good ones. I tried tying this with marabou, which a lot of people tie, I, I think you're gonna tie it with marabou. And I didn't like um, I didn't like the looks of it, so um, I found that mine looked better with ostrich hurl, I think. And you have to I I really think for a smaller fly like this size 16, you uh, need to come up to the tip of the ostrich feather where the hurls are very thin, and find I don't know five six of them and snip them off. You don't want to pluck these. I'm going to snip them off. And and then I try to line them up as best I can. Uh, there are tricks there are tricks to uh, to getting these even. If they don't quite even up for you and you don't like the way they're evened up, with this and with marabou, you can just um, uh, take your thumbnail and pluck it and you'll still get that tapered shape without, um, and so I, I kind of fuss with them a little bit to try to get them to line up. And then I also wet them just, just barely. And I tie in my shuck a little bit less than the, the shank length. And I just hold it hold my finger on the far side. I probably should spin my tying thread counterclockwise to get it to jump back over there. And I just take about three turns over that shuck. So you can see now that's pointing down. And then I take some uh, very fine gold wire you could use any color you want i like the real fine stuff this is extra small uh, ultra wire very very fine and get a piece of that and is that copper or gold tom it looks like copper co copper yeah copper I think okay it's gold silver whatever i don't think it matters um and then what i do is i grab these ostrich hurls with 
with two of my middle fingers and lay the rib in there and then just wind forward. And this doesn't really matter if it rotates around the shank. And I stop at about the midpoint. So I got my, my ostrich hurls sticking back there. I got my rib here um, in place. And I'm going to turn it over to you, Mr. Flagler. Okay, let me just get my cameras all turned on here and ready to go. Um, and don't fall into any pitfalls, Tim. No, no, no pitfalls today. Let's let's hope anyway. So um, I, I'm going to go a little different on the hook, and, I, and, I, and I'll I'll show you why. Of course um, you are. Of course you are. I'm going to use a lightning strike, uh, just a dry fly hook, and one of the reasons is I, I do. Um, on this pattern, I, I just like a little longer body to work with if it's supposed to be a trailing shuck sticking off of there. And the, I don't know whether you can see this, but it, this hook just, this is a tactical or, or it's a falling mill 50-50, uh, about the same as the tactical dry fly. The, the shank is just a little bit longer on the, um, on the lightning strike. Interestingly, the, uh, the gap is kind of larger on the uh on the tactical anyway and so let, let's pretend that this is barbless <laughs> yeah um yeah oh yeah and, you know longer shank gives you a little more room for error uh, it does but it it also makes it so um i i can run my marabou straight off the back and i just like to look better anyway um so i'm using for thread uh, this is 10 uh Beavis, and I'm going to kind of do the same thing as Tom, remarkably. What? Get my thread started about the... We mid actually start our thread the same way? Yeah, and that's about <laughs> all we do the same <laughs> on this pattern. And and so I'm going to start my thread there. For thread, I'm using, uh, like, like Tom, uh, for, for wire. wire. Sorry. Thank you, Joan. Uh, gold. Uh, the gold shows up a little bit better on the color marabou that I'm using, and so, but extra small. Keep keep it keep it really really small. And I've already yeah. fixed the color marabou. What what do you mean? Golden brown is like the best color ever yeah. for uh, everything. Uh. So I I'm gonna get my I'm gonna start my wire started. Yeah, but maybe. if I could see on the near side, so <laughs> near side of the hook, and I'm gonna get this tied in before I tie in my marabou. Marabou in a beautiful, beautiful golden brown color, really spectacular. The trout love this color. It's science, and I'm gonna grab. about the same thing gosh six or seven except what? six or seven fibers i don't like the stringy tips and so i'm going to take my fingernails as tom suggested and just take those stringy tips right off of there and they still look you know a little little rough and and uneven and tapered and all that yeah they stuff. look like the fins on a new jersey trout <laughs> <laughs> Are we done? Yeah. Mr. Rosenbauer? <laughs> yeah, we're done. So what I'm going to do now. is I, I like a real short, like real stubby, not not a hook shank or I, like a hook gap, a stubby little tail on here. And I, I too, I'm not going to really wrap down into the bend. Um, I could stop there, but I'm not going to. I'm going to take... I'm going to jump ahead of Tom. I'm going to take these fibers, not really twist them or anything. And again, I'm wrapping behind my tying thread because it's multi-stranded. And I want to keep all this, all these strands together. You do have to be careful, delicate hip hook point and very fine marabou stems, if you will. And I go about two thirds I'm going to go, should I go one more time? What do you think? 
No, oh, a couple gonna, more. A couple more, Tim. Couple I'm going to stop right there. No, I think it should go a couple more so that then you don't have room to finish the fly. Now, I'm going to do something that's really weird, okay? No, I'm gonna, uh, you, why am I not surprised? <laughs> I'm going to take my marabou and wind, just wind that stem forward out over the hook eye. And I'm going to snip it off right there. Okay, we'll see why I do that later. Oh. Okay, and then you can fluff this a little. Should I wind my rib? Yeah, go ahead, wind your, wind your okay. rib. Okay. So the reason I put it on the near side of the hook, I don't want to disturb this beautiful tail that sticks straight out the back, not down the hook bend. And I'm going to take my wire, nice, even, kind of go through those marabou fibers, get them fluffed out a little bit if I can. Try not to trap too many of them. Not a huge deal if you trap a few and get it all the way up to there now you guys have seen me do this before but since i counter wrap the rib i don't want to kind of open the rib by wrapping that way with my tying thread so i'm going to reverse my direction of thread wrap sorry go that way initially and then reverse back that way it locks on there real tight this stuff i, I you can it really easy to break off and so there's that fluffy fluffy little beautiful golden brown marabou body and tail trailing shuck whatever you want to call it on there okay. you're up <laughs> okay <laughs> and tom, you, tom, I don't, tom i don't know if you saw in the comments tom and tim mm -hmm. that tree was asking if you can use schleppen for the trailing shuck should I pronounce that correctly? Uh, I, I guess you could. The fibers could. aren't real. The little microfibers aren't really that long on it, though. Well, you know what? If you came down to the base of a schlappen feather, I, I'm not looking at one right now, but maybe the, the webby stuff at the base might work, yeah. Because it's like marabou, yeah. right? The webby stuff at the base. Oh, yeah. true. Yeah, true. I, I like the, I like pheasant tail myself. I, I, I like it better yeah. than marabou, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, this is more the original, either marabou or ostrich. So we're yeah, trying yeah, the original. Yeah, but, that's, uh, pheasant tail would, is great as well. And most yeah. people have pheasant tail around. So And and in different colors, too. You can add a little, yeah. you know, a little color there as well. Yeah. Um, different, different colors than you get, you know, marabou in, maybe. Yeah. Okay. So... Uh, course i'm going to tie this differently than than mr flagler and i'm not being contrary i just do it better <laughs> so i am going to take my ostrich fibers and twist them <gasps> why yes. why and i find so, so I you trap all those wonderful fibers is that yeah, why but it's still it still gives me a good look Still okay. gives me a good look without being bulky. And then I take I take hackle pliers and grab the the ends. And then I just carefully and again, like Tim said, gotta really watch out for the hook point because you're using some you're using some very delicate um, fibers here. Now see Tim, even though I twisted those. I'm getting the nice gill, the gill, uh, gill looking stuff. And you're okay with that thread wrap showing in the back? Yeah. <laughs> Bastard. I'm going to cover it up with my, my rib. <sighs> All right. So I'm going to tie that out, but right about the middle of the shank, a couple of turns. Hard to get in here with the lights and the camera. Yeah, that that's a little hot spot that I left. Ah, of course. No, I'm gonna cover it up with my rib. I'm gonna make sure that I cover it up with my rib.
Ta-da. And then I like these ribs very tight, very close together on this fly. I think it looks better. I hear you chuckling at something, Flybar. Nothing. And that, that what, I, good. what I do I in what I do instead of uh, counter of uh, reversing my threat is I just take a couple extra turns with my because this stuff is so fine it's not going to show it's not going to bulk it up and then I make sure that I and I might even helicopter this uh, use your wire cutters that's always fun. <laughs> Yeah, I can actually get to just use my scissors because oh, the tips of them too. Yeah, they're good scissors, and um, I'll, I'm going to stop there. Okay, okay, I I do. I don't know whether it's the ostrich hurl, your incredible tying technique, but I I do like the look of that body. Thank you. Yeah, it's a little more pipe cleaner like than than mine. Um. Anyway. Remember that, folks, in the voting. Okay. Remember that. Just, I, you know, the longer fibers just might have a little bit more motion to them, so the pattern would come to life, but I don't know. Anywho, black screen. Uh, so for my, the, the thorax on the fly, I'm going to go, come on, camera. There we go. Sorry, folks. Got to get refocused here. I'm going to go with some rabbit. Uh, in this color called ginger, to me, it, it, it's kind of orangey yellow and a real good complement to the to the beautiful golden brown marabou that I'm using. And just the tiniest little bit. That's like way, way too much. Um, and I can zoom out just just a little bit. And even though it's just a small clump, I'm going to pull up and get those those rabbit fibers kind of aligned parallel to my tying thread. And I'm going to put a little bit more on there. I, I do want to keep this small, but at the same time, I want to keep it short is what I want to do, really. Uh, I am going to kind of build it up into a little ball back here. Not, not real huge. About like that, and eh, maybe a little bit more. Go right to the eye with it. Yeah, I should go right to the eye. Yeah, go right to the eye with it. And the reason to build it up a little bit more is I am going to go in and using a, a fine tipped bod. Can you you can use a uh, a dubbing brush? In fact, I'm going to use my little Velcro. And I just kind of like blending the dubbing back just a little bit into the into the marabou. Again, just kind of a more lifelike look, so there isn't a, a huge like dip or transition down in into the marabou. And I'll stop right right then and there. I would argue that there should be a transition because when you look at those emerging duns, there's a big. I mean the the. The sulfur nymphs are kind of brownish, and the the fly is pale yellow. And I think you want a stark transition. It's, it's just me. It's like a puppy dog. I, I, I thought you were tying a streamer there for a minute when you were fuzzing that I, thing up. I just like the natural look. I, I don't like seeing a little, like, where, where this thing almost looks like an egg sitting there. Yeah, yeah. I want it to kind of oh. go back the way. The natural I like it. The, I like it the other way. Okay. okay to each his own. If you don't want to catch <laughs> trout, it's up to you. Okay, so uh, I am going to. Um, I've got some pre pre mixed dubbing here that I keep in a little container. This is uh, super fine dubbing, and it's a mixture of orange and yellow. So it's very similar shade to what Tim uses, but I'm using a, a synthetic super fine dubbing instead of uh, instead of rabbit fur. Uh, and I'm just going to, again, like Tim, pinch a little bit off. Got some dirt in there somehow. 
And I like to take this stuff and kind of get it kind of mixed up. It dubs easier if you don't have those long strands in it. And then I'm going to um, double, same as Tim, dubbing a little a thorax. And you don't want any taper to this. You just want kind of a lump. And so I'm going to put my lump on there. Can you see that? Yeah, you can see that. I might have too much, but, and I yeah. like that. I like that stark difference. And I go back a little bit on it too. Yeah, I, I like that. I, I want it to look. show. I want it to show. I want that, I want that to show peeking out of that shuck. I don't, the egg I don't, peeking out of the trailing shock. I'm not, I'm not going to fuzz it up. <laughs> okay. You know, those hatchery raised mayflies that you have in New Jersey, um, they might look different than our wild mayflies up here in Vermont. Mm -hmm. Oh, one other thing, one, one other thing I'm going to do is I am going to wrap my thread all the way to the eye and back. Why is that, Tom? Uh, because I want a little base uh, for that deer hair when I tie it in. Yeah. I don't want it, I don't want it to slip. Interesting. What do you think? Okay. Okay. I'm a little, I'm a, I'm a little worried here. The way you said that, I'm a little, well, a little concerned. Uh, no, what you did, you don't, don't that, be, like, don't be, because that, that's exactly, exactly why I wound my tying thread all the way forward with those marabou fibers underneath was just because of that. Um, if you oh, try to go okay. um, on on this, if you try to go um, deer hair on bare hook shank. Yeah, uh, you are spins. very likely to have a, a wing that spins around the hook shank. So yeah. um, anyway, uh, both Tom and I are okay. in agreement on that one. Okay. Uh, so we, we have talked at length, I know before about, uh, you know, tracking down and having the right uh, deer hair for things. And the, this is one I, I, it's a few years old now and I'm, I'm kind of hoarding it. it it's like yeah. one of the most perfect pieces of deer hair uh, that yeah. I own. It just does that everything really right. good. Yeah. How many then, pieces did you go through uh, uh, tying I, these before you found the right piece? Oh, no. For, for, for this, I knew exactly when, as soon as you said, uh, you know, a light um, quiggly cripple, I, I knew the patch of hair that I was going to use. It uh -huh. was, oh, okay. Um, I and, went through. So, I went through one, two, three, four, five pieces until I found the, the piece that I wanted. Uh, yeah. No, I, I, yeah. I knew, I know this piece. It, I, again, uh -huh. I, I, sh I should have it in my, um, my uh, trophy case or something. It, it's, yeah. uh, it really is a work of art and uh, very, very, just, it does everything right. And uh, it, every That's time why I... Every time I pluck a clump off of here, I'm like, "Golly, it's th there's less than there was before." <laughs> and and, yeah. and I think people people who watch our our tying things regularly um, know that we will urge you when you're in a fly shop if you see a good what looks like a good piece of deer hair, buy it, spend yeah. the few bucks um, because there is a lot of difference in deer hair. Yeah, and and if you don't, it's one of those things that's going to haunt you for the rest of your days, <laughs> and and, uh, yeah. and you, you'll really wish you did. And there there are other ones, admittedly, that I, I get, and I think they're good. And then I get them home, and you know they look good in the in the shop yeah. or wherever. And you get them home, and there's something something drastically wrong with them, and you don't yeah. really know until you uh, to actually uh, you know tie with it. Uh, Tie, yeah, uh, start yeah. cleaning it, tying with it, and um, but you you'll it, find another use for it, and you've only spent a few bucks on it, so yeah, I don't know how much yeah. a patch of deer hair costs these days. Um, the the one hint on this fly, guys, though, is is um, 
err on the side of less fibers as opposed to more. It it it, it kind of benefits to me anyway uh, from from less fibers. You, you know, you you want to get a little buoyancy in there. You obviously want to see the wing, uh, but but uh, if you try to pack too many fibers on there, it just it doesn't look good, and it it's kind of a problem uh, getting them tied in. So I'm gonna actually advance my thread forward just a little bit and measure the wing to me should be about a shank length and i'm going to give my bobbin a nice little counterclockwise spin just to make sure that that thread gets up in there i'm going to flare it a little bit you know what i want to go just a hair longer Oh, damn. I was hoping you were going to keep it there. <laughs> I'm, I'm real picky on the, the length here. I don't, I don't, I don't like them too long. Feeling How many are you going to make, Flagler? <laughs> like I said, I want to get it just right. Yeah. And I'm feeling pretty good about that length. I am going to come back just a little bit, compress that deer hair. I'm not going to let go of it. And then reach in with my tying scissors and leave that just little secondary wing right there. Yeah. And you know, when you put this in water, um, that little stub of deer hair really helps, or I feel really helps orient the fly properly in the surface field. I think it's an important part of the fly. Yeah. As it is like, even on the, um, you know, on the last chance cripple, that little, yeah. that little tough to CDC, it looks good. And yeah. I, I think it does have a physical function as well. Um, mm -hmm. Uh Oh, what the dog. Oh, he's not in his kennel anymore. He's graduated oh. to sleeping outside of his kennel. So, Oh, that's great. He is, yeah. He doesn't make as much noise. That actually might have been my mother-in-law, not the dog. She's, she's visiting. <laughs> You're going to pay for that one, fella. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I guess I tie the wing now, right? Uh, yeah. If you're dubbed, if you're, if you're happy Oops. with that dubbing ball, then. I love it. I, okay. I think it's perfect. I think it's absolutely perfect. I love it. It's just where I want it. It's just the amount I want. Because if you if you make it too small, um, it doesn't it doesn't show up. So I have um, an equally nice, I think, piece of uh, um, bleached white-tailed deer. This is bleached, by the way. Yeah, mine's bleached as well. Yeah, yeah, I, I saw that, and I. Unlike Tim, I like a little bit more of a wing. Now, oh boy, I like it. I, I like it fairly robust. There's a reason for that. Um, we you fish sulfurs. I mean, in the in the east, you fish sulfurs, which is just like the western pale morning done um, in the evening. And I want to be able to see this sucker. And so um, I put a little bit more on there, maybe than than a flagler would, but I could see it better, and that's important to me. Yeah, yeah. With older eyes, you know. It, it... Well, no, no joke. I'm starting to develop cataracts, and I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have surgery as soon as I can. Really, I just uh, I'll clear just that my appointment, out. and I'm I'm early early stages. I found out. Yeah, I am too. Well. I'm early, but I'm I'm still gonna get it done. <laughs> okay, so change cameras here. I guess I don't have that much more. On I see a hair sticking out that I don't like. I'm gonna pull it out there. Okay, so yeah, about a shank length. Advance it forward. Spin the thread, and I just put my finger against the far side to compress it down. Wow, does that flare? Yeah, that's okay. I'm gonna fix it. Don't worry about it. I'm gonna fix it. I like it flared, it shows up better. 
and then mm -hmm. I'm going to come back because I, I need to I need to uh, develop a little bit of a collar to wind my hackle. So I'm going to come back not too far into my egg. <laughs> and I then see you're I, using the proper terminology. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then just like Tim, I, I'm not going to let go of that hair. And I am going to come in, get out of there. And cut it off as even as I can. And then, um, yeah, I guess I can raise the wing afterwards. But that wing, will, that wing is, yeah, it's a little, it's flaring a little bit, but it's wider, and I'm going to be able to see it better. And that's a, okay. I think it's important when you're fishing these flies in the evening. Now, if I was fishing Montana, Wyoming, fishing a pale morning done in the middle of the day, it wouldn't, it wouldn't matter so much. But um, yeah, you know, for our eastern sulfurs, I think you got to be able to see it. I would agree. So there. So there. So there, Flagler. All right. I, I guess I'm up with Hackle, eh? You're up with Hackle. Yep. Up with Hackle. Stacker goes away. Comb can go away. Now, are you going to tie away. this in shiny side forward? I sure as heck am. Ah, good. It's the way I like it. And uh, I see a question. War Dog asks, can you use yearling elk? Yeah, if it's fine enough, you could sure use yearling elk. You can get some nice. Uh, actually, yearling elk wouldn't be good. Bull elk would be better because bull elk, a fine piece of bull elk is going to be this light color. Um, and that'll work on bigger flies. Yeah, I, I, I think maybe, you know, any any elk is, it's the, the hair is, I, I guess the term is coarser. It's it's bigger diameter the hair, yeah, and, and yeah. on a particularly on on a fly this you know a size sixteen or an eighteen, uh, it's a little um, little little thick. But um, I think you could use it. I think you could. Yeah, I, I think you'd get away with it. Um, yep. <clears throat> anyway, for hackle, I'm 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 going back and using a just because it's so easy. Um, one of these whiting farms, one of the the um, hundred packs and uh <laughs> I, i've had this for a while because it had a price tag on it it was 10.95 uh and they're not 10.95 anymore <laughs> not by a long shot and so i'm going to peel uh, i have the shiny side of the feather facing me and i'm going to peel some from both sides of the stem down low and then a little more from the top edge of the stem i know you guys can't see that see it a little better here i think and so I'm just going to get that that bare stem tied in nice and tight and advance my tying thread. I'm not going to go up behind the eye. Jet, uh -oh. That's why I use a tie-in anchor, but... Points off. No points off for that. That just happens. Points off. You have to be perfect first time, Tim. Yeah. Yeah. And shiny well, side forward. Shiny side forward, but my hackle yeah. is not wanting to do that right now. So uh, just just wind it any old way. Wind it sideways. No. We're not gonna do that. We're gonna take a few wraps off. And we're gonna tie that bad boy in again because three three tries to tie in your hackle, really? Two. Well, no. two and a half. It was this two and a half, the third. right? This is the third. Okay. This will be legit then. And how many how, how many false starts did you have on your wing too? Oh, that, that's four. <laughs> that was four. Wow. Tough room. Uh, okay. Sure you don't want to take another turn? I'm positive, but see, you want to get it right. You want to have that that shiny side facing forward, just a little yeah. can't can't backwards. Yeah, agreed. We agree One, on two, that. Th three. I'm gonna have to keep keep on going here. Okay. Yeah, finish it off. Snip that off. 
pull a few wraps right back underneath there. Just kind of kick that wing up. We'll kick it back down in a second. That's not the puppy. That's the older dog. That sounds like an older dog. Yeah, he's seven. Make sure that whip finish is really in there. Snip your tying thread free and walk away. Get that <laughs> sucker framed up nice. <laughs> mm. All right. Wow. So I am going to use. Um, for my hackle, I'm not going to use saddle hackle. I'm going to use neck hackle. And I have this absolutely beautiful um, number one Keo grizzly cape, which um, is just my pride and joy. It's a beautiful, beautiful cape. I love Keo hackles. And I'm going to come in and pull a, pull a size 14 or maybe a little undersized. Now, just for the audience, I, I, I believe you just used the term cape and neck interchangeably. Yeah. Uh-huh. And that's legit. I hope so. Okay. I do. Is it? I was, I was just asked that question recently, and I, I oh. didn't, reala didn't realize that I, I used them interchangeably as well. But Yeah. No, I, I don't think there's any issue there. I'm going to strip these. Now, unlike Mr. Flagler... I am going to keep that butt on the feather because I found, I found the same thing that um, the hackle tends to slip out when you tie it in here. So by keeping the butt in there, I can, um, I can tie it in and then I can also make another turn when i tie off the hackle i'm tying in the butt again so i'm just going to keep it there keep that little that little fuzzy piece there let it hang there and since i'm not using saddle hackle i'm going to use hackle pliers this hackle is pretty long see how that see how that turns might take mm. another. but now since i've got that butt there No, it's not. No, it's not, Timmy. <laughs> and I'm going to just, you have to be careful you don't catch that little doodad there. So I'm using hackle pliers. What? N nothing. I think they're cut forward now. Huh? No, it's uh, cut. It's cut back. Well, maybe it is. Let me see. I'm gonna unwind it. I get. I get a do over too. <laughs> yes. It's cut backwards. That's cupped backwards. And you only need about three or four turns here. It's just to kind of help hold that fly in the film. And then now when I tie this off, I'm retying the butt in because I'm still tying over it. Three, let her do it. And you have to be careful not to wind that hackle under. And then, um, you know, just carefully come in with your scissors and Snip trim that guy. <laughs> no. How funny would that be? And then you see, oh. you've got a nice hand. You've got a nice handle here to come in and trim that off. And that'll, I mean. 
there might be a little butt left, but that's okay. It'll it'll mix in with the deer hair. And then I'm just gonna, just like Tim, I'm gonna raise that wing up and come in and make a few turns in front of that wing. Till it's about, I like it about 45. I don't know about you, Tim, but I like it, like it about 45 degrees. I'm thinking that's 45. I noticed I found a couple of hackles down. And then uh, whip finish. And it kind of helps if you pull things out of the way with your other hand. Put that back where it belongs. And <laughs> you thought I was going to cut the ring, didn't you? <laughs> please, oh, please, oh, please. <laughs> Jeez. My hands aren't as steady today as they usually are. And there we go. And of course, put a drop of head cement on there. And I might also, I might also work a little when I do. I might also work a little drop of head cement into that collar area. Yeah, I and I you Tim. No, I I uh like it, it's on like last chance cripples. I I I and and things like this. I I don't you I most folks know. I almost always put a drop of head cement on, and on these I don't. Um, it mm -hmm. it uh you know i found like particularly on the last chance that it has a tendency to wick up uh mm -hmm. that, on that cdc and mm -hmm. um uh, yeah a little less durability is okay for me on these yeah oh yeah you got Switch. a good whip finish you got a good whip finish and headset yeah. and it's not okay so julia you want to make us both big and we'll do the spin and the vote Sure. You got it. We'll put the uh, we'll put the link to vote in the comments. Boy, they're both looking pretty good, Tim. Yeah, they are. Oh, what is that? You know what I'm gonna have to hold on. I'm gonna back off my exposure just a bit. Uh, 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 what do you do? What do you do? What do you do? Nothing. Nothing. We're done. We're done. You can't. You can't preen it. You, you, what? You were backing off on your exposure. Well, just because you couldn't see the my beautiful my beautiful thorax there. Look at that thorax right down in there underneath. Look at that. Look at that nice separation between the body and the thorax. Wow, see, is, look how that, that just is, kind of comes back like it was a natural just with nice. legs and gills emerging from that nipple uh, shuck. Oh, spectacular look at really that. in a look golden at that. brown. Look at, Look at that nice robust <laughs> wing so that I can see it. Yeah, even though it's a little short, but I, I, is, I think people it, would still be able to see it. Who is who is that a real cat making the cat noises or is that Joan? Yeah, you, you got a dog, I got a cat. <laughs> oh, I thought maybe Joan was saying that we were being catty with each other. <laughs> no, he's he's 18 and like you, he has cataracts and um yeah. Well, I can't wait to get the surgery because it's going to make my evening fishing better. Yeah, guys uh, who have had it done uh, are, are like digging it. Um, yeah, then they get yeah. it done in one eye, and as soon as it's done in one, they want to do it in another. In their other. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't. They're both looking pretty, pretty good there, yeah, Mister Rosenbauer. Yeah, this is it's going to be a tough, tough call. One. Yeah, it is. It's going to be close. It's going to be close, Tim. Now, actually, a big question that we didn't answer um, is, do you snip the bottom of the hackle? Uh, a no. lot of people do. Uh -uh. Um, no, because because it, it doesn't it doesn't sit on the water this way. Uh, I know. It sits on it sits the water like this, this way. Yeah, right. you, want, you want all that hackle. A lot of that's people. The way it's, that's the way it sits. I'm not going to name names, Charlie Craven, but... Um, yeah, a lot of people. Charlie Craven trims his hackle. Uh, well, he's he's he leaves it, but uh, in 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 his video, yes, he did trim it in the end. He said you oh. could if you wanted to, but uh, sorry, Charlie. 
Uh, how are we doing? Okay, Julia? are we ready? Look at that wispy. Uh, well, I better sit folks. down for a couple this more one. votes. <laughs> They're trickling in. Hey, we have a winner here. Uh -oh. Mr. Flagler, congratulations. <sighs> Ah, yes. congratulations, Tim! Thank you. That 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 had to be really close, though. That I mean, they're 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 about as close as we've ever. Well, now that we're now that we're putting the voting link on your page too, it's a little bit even more even playing ground. Yeah. Ah, um, that's why. Ah, there we go. Congrats! Thank you, thank you. Congratulations, that, I, Tim. Congratulations, Tom. That was, I, I think that's the closest we've ever tied flies in terms of overall look. And again, yeah, we tied them a little differently, so. too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, so all good. Yeah. Now it's time to go out and fish them. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm uh, actually, while I was practicing, I was tying them in a uh, more, more uh, rather than that uh, yellowish abdomen. And uh, I was tying a little darker brown marabou and uh, kind of a cream color for the Cahills that we got just mm. starting to come pretty good right now. And uh, yeah. if you can see through all the smoke to find them. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's not bad out tonight, though, not compared to last night. Anyway. But, yeah, great fly, guys. Um, highly recommend it. Yeah. I, I don't want to take anything away from a last chance cripple because I, I really like that as well. But, but uh, it's a I great fly. Having, it's very yeah, effective. I, I think yeah. having both would be a, 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 you know, a good choice between the two. Um, yeah. I mean, I would use less, less chance cripple on really flat water, you know, still pools and the Henry's fork and so on spring creeks. And then on a little bit more riffled water, I'd use, I'd use this one. The quid. Yeah. Yeah, if it was not if, if Mr. Weilman was right and it was 1974, that <laughs> that that is truly inspired to come up with this yeah. back then. That that's something yeah. else, um, way 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 ahead of his time. Yeah, uh, yeah, way ahead of his time. Agreed. But most people were still fishing Catskill style flies if they weren't fishing no hackles then. Yeah, yeah, and parachutes were <laughs> kind of kind of brand new, or you uh, maybe they weren't brand new, but you. You know, first started seeing them in magazines and things like that, as I recall back back. Uh, yeah, I mean, they had been around since the '30s, but I think they were getting a lot more popular then. Right, right, yeah, yeah. I remember having someone early on, probably early '80s for me, uh, telling me um, it was up in the Adirondacks. To uh, I'd I'd only been tying cat skills, and they somebody said you really should be tying and fishing parachutes. <laughs> it's like what? <laughs> um, and uh but yeah that was that was probably early 80s that i first heard that yeah, yeah. so anyway all right everyone well um thanks for coming yeah thanks in. for your not not a lot of questions not a lot of questions this week really uh interesting not a lot of questions yeah yeah but um anyways thank you all for coming uh, thank you for coming from countries all over the world today that was yeah. pretty cool and, australia um, wow. we don't have a next month um uh lined up yet but um we may not because i've got i've got carpal tunnel surgery too in july and i may not be able to tie depends on wow how. yeah Are you you're just like falling apart up there. No, I'm gonna get it all fixed this year. <laughs> get everything, get everything fixed. This year. Get it taken care of in the off season, as the yeah, well, as football no, players do. No, get it scoped the in the off season. July is not the off season, but I, I can't stand it anymore. So yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, everyone. Thank, thank you. you very much, everybody. Thank you, and um, we'll talk. We'll see you soon, hopefully. Okay. I'm going to nail this fade to black. He's way ahead of you. I got it. <laughs> I got it. <laughs>